Week of Trinity 7, Thursday. You, the abyss, Jesus, and his boat. In peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Psalm 4, verse 8. Dear Redeemed, this is the last verse of a psalm that David wrote while he and his men were being pursued by a large army led by Absalom. In the midst of the fear of being captured and slain, this son of Jesse could lie down and sleep in peace, for the Lord was his God. David met the difficulties and hardships of these uncertain days with a quiet spirit that looked to his Savior in faith and continued to petition Jehovah for the peace that the world cannot give. God alone can provide it. As Peter began to sink into the abyss, he cried out to the same God, Lord, save me. Jesus answered his petition, reaching out his hand and raising the fishermen. Together, as the winds howled and the sea churned, they walked above the abyss as Jesus led Peter to the boat. And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Matthew 14, verse 32. It is no wonder that the abyss is often represented as eternal death, while a boat or ship is a symbol of the church. Outside this ark, there is only the inevitable death of the deep, a wretched, everlasting drowning. This is man's portion due to sin, and apart from Christ, this is his eternity. To save us from this, and to rescue us for heaven, the Son of God has come into this world. By his own will and power, Jesus walks on the water to demonstrate that he is God, and that hell has no dominion over him. On his way to the cross, Jesus shed his blood for the sins of all people. On his way to ascension and enthronement in heaven, the Christ journeyed through the Easter tomb. The ransom and redeemer of the world is risen. Jesus lives and reigns. He has provided and accomplished salvation for all. Those Old Testament folk who trusted in him, as well as the New Testament people who believe in him, are members of the one church. Jesus continues to escort souls into his little ship. He does this by the word and the working of the Holy Spirit. In these New Testament times, people come into the church through baptism and the proclamation of the good news of Jesus. Baptism, which now corresponds to this, the ship, Noah's Ark, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God. 1 Peter 3, verses 21 through 22a. The Christian has been brought into the boat with Jesus, and the wind has ceased. That is, this soul has been cleansed in Christ, is in the presence of the Lord, and has peace with God. That which is above, namely, heaven, is open. But please note another truth. As long as the Christian is in this world, the abyss remains outside the boat. It is possible to fall from the faith, to depart from the church, either intentionally or by default. Enticement to evil, succumbing to pet sins, associating with non-Christians, embarrassed of being a Christian, not having a local congregation to attend, developing the habit of not attending to the care of the soul, being lazy, thinking too much, thinking too little. The abyss is out there, and the maws of its jaws are more than willing to accommodate the careless soul. Salvation is not only by being brought to faith in Christ Jesus, it is also by remaining steadfast in the faith. You are not only brought into the boat, but it is wise to remain aboard. May God grant that such souls as are with him may remain that way, and may serve and work to bring other lost souls into the church as well. Prayer Lord Jesus, grant that the old sinful nature in me may, by daily sorrow and faith, be drowned in the gracious waters of baptism, and a new man come forth cleansed and ready to serve you and your church. Thus, in peace I will both lie down and sleep, for you alone, O Lord, make me dwell in safety. Amen.
hymn number 403, stanzas 5 and 6. So, too, by our repentance must, the old man with his sins and lust, be daily drowned and then arise, a new man righteous, pure, and wise, that by the water and the word were born again we thank thee, Lord, in life and death thine let us be, and thine in all eternity.